Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Sorry, we're starting just a little bit later today than usual, but we're on it. Beautiful day around here. It's a very blue sky, white snow, cold, cold, cold day here. And the cows are in the back of the field having breakfast. Well, let's get started. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. In the same Christ our Lord. Great. Well, without further ado, let's just get started. Oh my goodness, it's already nine after. All right, here we go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long are, will you grieve for Saul, whom I have rejected as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. But Samuel replied, how can I go? Saul will hear of it and kill me. To this the Lord answered, take a heifer along and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I myself will tell you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I point out to you. Samuel did as the Lord had commanded him. When he entered Bethlehem, the elders of the city came trembling to meet him and inquired, Is your visit peaceful, O seer? He replied, Yes, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So cleanse yourself and join me today for the banquet. He also had Jesse and his sons cleanse themselves and invited them to the sacrifice. As they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because he sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and presented him before Samuel, who said, the Lord has not chosen him. Next, Jesse presented Shammah, but Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to him. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel, with a horn, of oil in hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. 
And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ram. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have found David, my servant. I have found David, my servant. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown. Over the people I have set a youth. I have found David, my servant. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil. I have anointed him, that my hand may be always with him, and that my arm may make him strong. I have found David, my servant. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior, and I will make him the firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. I have found David, my servant. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need, and he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God when Abiathar was high priest, and ate the bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat, and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Chosenness is not something that we take for granted. So in this story, we have just gone through Saul and the rejection of Saul. And now David, and David's story doesn't end particularly well either. And then finally, we have you know, Solomon after him, and that story doesn't end great either. So there, there's all these kind of issues that come. So aside from the chosenness by God, there's also this other thing, which is just how far it goes. So, for example, in this first part, we had this really remarkable thing uh, about chosenness. Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature. Because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because he sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Always a good reminder. Now, that someone is chosen, though. It's not a done deal. It's not a for sure thing. And so over and over again in the Old Testament, we get that trope. Still, that chosenness is very much in the hands of the person who's chosen. And this is kind of the other part of it, which is how free will works. We're no stranger to this at all. With the Lord... And being the Lord of the Sabbath and all that, even though he is the son of man, there's still a chosenness here that I think is very useful for us to consider. So this week I've been on a bit of a bent about talking about leisure, about how we enjoy our time, what we do with our time, what we do with ourselves. And I think it's a very indicative thing. So this little thing about going through the fields and picking the heads off the grain and therefore violating the Sabbath. Um, is always an interesting little story, but I think it's a good opportunity for us to talk about something even more important, which is what is it that we do with our time? Obviously, the things of God should be attended to, that the, these are important, that these kind of come first. Fantastic. But then there's also the rest of it, which is 
the way in which we celebrate, the way in which we relax, the way in which we use this time that we think is entirely our own and um, sometimes fall into that trap of thinking that therefore it doesn't matter what we do is also very indicative of our character and in a very special way brings forward exactly what this chosenness in God is. God has chosen us in baptism, that adoption as the sons and daughters of God, again, in baptism. The call that we have received is one that we should cherish, of course, but is also really mostly seen not in the active bits, but in the leisure bits of how our character really responds to it and how that chosenness actually remains in us. The appearances that we judge by are just that, appearances, but the Lord knows our hearts. And so when we have that opportunity to actually be at leisure, this also is very indicative of who we really are. Hopefully that's not too terrifying to say. Now we started late and I didn't I don't want to go too too long today, but really that's it. That's all it is. Being said, we might not have coffee on Saturday because leisure demands a couple things, but we'll see about that. We'll you'll find out more about that later. It will be on the website or not. You know, who knows? We'll see when we get there. Cool. As we always do, now let's bring our prayers together and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For the Holy Father's prayer intention this month, that the Holy Spirit helps us to recognize the gift of the different prisms within the Christian community and to discover the richness of different ritual traditions in the heart of the Catholic Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we grow in a spirit of contrition for our sins and love for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, that they may lead us each day to greater virtue and kindness towards our neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the needy, and the downtrodden, for those who are struggling with feelings of despair, that they may feel loved and consoled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom or what else shall we pray? For the intercession of St. Monica, for all our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people, and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Good times. Made it. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints. In mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. For the same Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, 
who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great. Everyone have a very lovely Tuesday, and we'll see you again tomorrow. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.